Hello and welcome back to another end of another video. Today we are talking about the severe weather that will be impacting parts of the Northeast today. We do have chances for tornadoes in the Northeast. We have chances for hail in the Northeast, which are fairly uncommon. But we also have strong winds, which is more common than not. But we do have marginal, slight, and enhanced risks. So let's go through them. There's a lot of population under these risks, so let's start off with enhanced under 78,000 square miles and a population of 26.8 million people, including Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Baltimore, Maryland, Washington, D.C., Arlington, Virginia, and Syracuse, New York. We have slight risks across what's called 100,000 square miles and a population of 31.1 million people, including New York City, Virginia Beach, Virginia, Raleigh, North Carolina, Newark, New Jersey, and Norfolk, Virginia. And we have marginal risks across 215,000 square miles and a population of 34.8 million people, including Charlotte, North Carolina, Boston, Massachusetts, Atlanta, Georgia, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Lubbock, Texas. Tornado risks. We have 5% risks and 2% risks. 5% chance of tornadoes across 79,000 square miles and a population of 28 million people, including Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Baltimore, Maryland, Washington, D.C., Arlington, Virginia, and Patterson, New Jersey. And 2% chance of tornadoes across 87,000 square miles and a population of of 19.7 million people, including New York City, Virginia Beach, Virginia, Raleigh, North Carolina, Newark, New Jersey, and Norfolk, Virginia. We have strong winds, which roughly correlates to the categorical risk. So if you're in a slight risk, uh, you have a 15% chance enhanced is 30, and marginal is 5 Hail, about the same thing, but there is no 30% chance, so slight and enhanced is a 15% chance, and marginal is a 5% chance. So that makes things simple. Now, here is the simulated radar. This is where we're going to go over our timing. So you can see here we have our rain starting to filter into the region, but nothing severe yet. Now, throughout the day... Uh, we do start to see storms fire up, and I think the start of the event will be right around here. This is right around noon Eastern time. Now, this is in areas such as around State College, Pennsylvania, uh, areas around there, maybe Altoona as well. Then we start to see it move into areas around Williamsport, Harrisburg, around 1 p.m. and at 2 p.m. we're now in two areas like Lancaster, York, Pennsylvania, as well as closing in on DC. DC starts to get into it, the surrounding areas, uh, such as uh, areas around Leesburg, Reston, those areas, right around, let's call that, I believe, yeah, 2 p.m., yeah, 2 p.m. and no, it's 3 p.m. I'm forgetting that we move forward in time. Uh, then D.C. and Baltimore both move through by 4, and we start to see it go into Philadelphia between 4 and 5 p.m., New York City by 6, uh, Hartford by 7, and... Boston ran right around, let's say, 9 p.m. Then I want to go over uh, northern New York. Uh, potentially some uh, thunderstorms moving through Rochester here. This is right around 2 p.m. 3 p.m. in Syracuse, uh, 4 p.m. in Utica, and probably 6 p.m. in Albany. So, just a lot of areas with high populations getting impacts throughout the day today. So, let's go over here, starting off with our mixed layer cape. This is the energy for those thunderstorms to form. 
and you can see that the energy is not consistent. Of course, that is because of the terrain of the Northeast. We're not going to see those uh, very consistent sheets of energy like we do in the South Central region and the Southeast where the land is much flatter. But we do have some areas of 2,000 to 3,000 joules per kilogram of energy here in parts of the valleys of Central Pennsylvania and New York in most of northern Maryland and Delaware, southern New Jersey, the outskirts of D.C. and northern V.A. And that all starts to increase mostly around Philadelphia. Philadelphia seems like the most energy is going to be around there. And then we kind of hit this wall at the Hudson River where most of the energy goes down. Of course, at this point, this is... That's... 6 o'clock in the, let's call that afternoon, evening time frame. Uh, sun's starting to go down, less energy there. So you kind of ha have that wall of energy leading up to the Hudson River. It kind of acts as a boundary with this severe weather threat. So if you're east of the Hudson River, there's a much better chance that you have uh, little impacts. I'm talking major impacts like hail. You can see here also with the supercell composite index, which is just the chance of supercells on a 1 to 50 scale. Uh, very low for the beginning part of the day, but it does ramp up here around Philadelphia again. Areas up to maybe 11. But again, another wall at the Hudson River. After that, you have Boston hovering around 0, maybe 1 for most of the day. And then our significant tornado parameter. Uh, this is going to be the most detailed part here because we do have smaller risks around DC like 0 0.5, Baltimore is at 0 0.7. But we do see some areas north of DC and Baltimore getting into those ones. Most of New Jersey in that one to two, maybe even, yeah, hitting two plus range. But again, another wall at the Hudson River Valley, which if you live in New England, you're getting spared from any of the chances here. Now, a lot of this, you can see there's a lot of variability here. Whereas typically when we're looking at our significant tornado parameters, there's a little bit more consistency, especially when we have enhanced risks like we do today. And again, this is where terraining comes into play. Uh, supercells and tornadoes really don't form over hilly mountainous areas. Uh, it's just the ingredients are there, but the terrain kind of rips them up. So usually the significant tornado parameters, supercell composite index, are typically lower. That's why when you look at uh, this from the Storm Prediction Center, it's not always 100% what's going to happen because this signature, just a straight line, in the northeast is a lot different than that same signature in the south central u.s because in the northeast if you live in a hillier area those impacts like this five percent risk probably goes down a little bit because the any tornadoes that form aren't going to be moving across large areas like we saw in uh, mayfield kentucky last year where we saw a tornado move across miles and miles of terrain that just doesn't happen in the northeast so that's why the significant tornado parameters down that's why the supercell composite index is down uh i think it's just going to be mostly a wind event hail could happen too i do think that'll stay west of the hudson river valley and east of the hudson river valley minimal impacts which is good for any of you in boston uh hartford areas around there uh, minimal impacts, maybe some strong winds, some hail, just your typical summer thunderstorms. But in areas of the northeast, again, uh, you see a tornado once in a blue moon over there. So make sure you have a plan in place for today and in the future too. Who knows how often this will be happening this year. Make sure you have a plan in place and a way to execute that uh, throughout the day today. And we went over the timing so you know the potential impact time frames that you have. So coordinate that with 
what's going on in your day. I know, you know, the Northeast is very hectic, but uh, that is all the information that I have on the severe threat. If you found this video informative, consider leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell. And stay tuned here for more severe weather and hurricane season coverage. Hurricane season coming up soon. But that is all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.